Israel Israel I'm back with part two of the old covenant slash testament with Moses and the new testament with Jesus Christ okay we left off on Jeremiah 16 and verse 11 let's go there Israel all right and it reads then shalt thou say unto them the Israelites because your fathers have forsaken me saith the Lord and have walked after other gods and have served them and have worshipped them and have forsaken me and has not, and have not kept my law. So the Lord said Israel that we forsaken the Most High and walked after other gods, which is uh, one of the Ten Commandments, which he told us not to do. OK, a lot of our people still worship other gods today. You see what I'm saying? Wooden stones and, you know. Uh, the white Christ and, and you know, uh, you know, Buddha and Islam, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are people still worshiping idols, right? They're not worshiping the true Jesus Christ. Okay. And, um, you gotta remember, remember Christ said many shall come in my name and deceive many, Right. They, they, all the whitewashing and all that, you know, during the time of the Renaissance and everything. But, um, yeah, a lot of our people worship other gods, man. Okay. And he says, what? And have worshiped other gods and served them and have worshiped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. So the Lord said, we didn't even keep the law of Israel because we transgressed against the law. Why did our forefathers could, um, couldn't keep his law, which I told you before, is due to the carnal mind they had. Okay, that mercy, that grace, who is Jesus Christ, the word of God, didn't come yet. Okay, so therefore, we couldn't be purged. Our forefathers' mind couldn't be purged off of animals. That blood could not purge their conscience. Because the next year, or the next soul, they back in the temple, um... You know, sacrificing the animal, giving the animal to the high priest to make atonement for their sins. If that blood was enough, the, the animal blood, why did they come and have to keep repeating it? It's because that blood could not take away sins, Israel. That blood of the animal couldn't take away sins. Okay? It was a temporary atonement until the Mashiach, Jesus Christ, was born who is the perfect Lamb of God for our sins. His blood is perfect, Israel. Okay, we was not brought with money. We was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb. Without spot or blemish, Israel. Right, the same way the Most High told our forefathers in Exodus 12 about the, um, about the lamb. Jesus Christ is that lamb, Israel. You got to believe so that he can purge your conscience. You have to have of faith in his blood and his word, Israel, right? You have to eat the flesh of the son of man so that you can have life, he said. He is the true bread that came down from heaven, the living waters, because God put eternal life in him. So those that believe in him, Israel, have eternal life. But if you don't, you already condemned yourself, he said. You see what I'm saying? So the only way for us to get to eternal life, we have to have faith in the word of Jesus, Israel, the word of God. All right. So he said they have not kept my law. Right. Let's go over to. Second Ezra. So the second Ezra chapter one and verse eight. And it reads. He's talking to Ezra here. Okay, he said, pull thou off then the hair of thy head and cast all evil upon them, for they have not been obedient unto my law. So the Lord said we haven't been obedient to his law. You see what I'm saying? But it is a rebellious people. Let's go over to Second Edges chapter two. Second Edges chapter two. And we want five to seven. And it reads, As for me, O Father, I call upon thee for a witness over the mother of these children, 
which will not keep my covenant, which will not keep my covenant. Okay? The law is within the covenant, Israel. So we break the covenant, we break the law, we break the covenant, Israel. Okay? That's why he said he, he was going to make a new, he's going to make a new covenant with us. Right? He has to put the law in our inward parts, though. He said, which would not keep my covenant, verse 6, that thou bring them to confusion. You see what I'm saying? And that's why we was destroyed. We didn't know who we, <clears throat> we, didn't know who we were, Israel, for a long time. And their mother to a spoil, which he did. He made Jerusalem desolate that, in 70 AD. That was the last time the real Hebrews was in that land. That there may be no offspring of them. Let them be scattered abroad among the heathen. Let their names be put out of the earth, for they have despised my covenant, the Lord says. He says this throughout the whole Bible. That we have despised and broken his covenant. Let's go over to Psalm 78 and 10, Israel. All praise and glory to the Most High God of Israel in Jesus' name. Psalm 78 and verse 10. And it reads, They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. So, it's all over the Bible, Israel. So therefore, why do our people still want to be under the veil of Moses? You see what I'm saying? The law has to be written in our inward parts. That's the only way we can keep the law. We can't keep the law with a carnal conscience, Israel. All right? We can't. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 9 and 16. All right, it's very clear, Israel. But ask yourself, why do a lot of Hebrews still desire to be under the law of Moses? Nehemiah 9 verse 16, and it reads, But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks. And hearken not to thy commandments. Okay? So we deal with the commandments, which is in the law. The law is within the covenant. Okay? We broke the covenant. We broke the law. We broke the covenant, Israel. So therefore, we didn't keep up the end of our bargain of the covenant, which the Most High kept his part. He sent the sword to avenge the core of his covenant. Right? And um, he had to make a new covenant with us. All right. Jesus is the new covenant. His blood. All right. Which he shed for us. Let's go to Baruch chapter four. Baruch chapter four, verse six to 13, Israel. And it reads, you were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, right? Because the Lord is chastening the Israelites, all right? His grape, his remnant, he's chastening them in the nations. But because ye moved God to wrath, ye were delivered unto the enemies. You see that? Not your friends, Israel. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God. Didn't he say they sacrificed in Jeremiah 16? They uh, worship other gods. Right. And even our brother Paul even says the things that the Gentiles sacrifice not unto God, but unto devils is right. And he said, I, I would have you not have partake of, um, sit at the same table with devils. OK. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God. Ye have forgotten the everlasting God that brought you up and ye have regret and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. Why we forgot the everlasting God, the one true living God, our God Israel, is because we departed from his law. When, he de when we departed from his law, that's when the Lord departed from us and went back to heaven. Gave us up, sent the sword after us, made us a waste. All right. We became enemies. Okay. Jerusalem that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of God coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion. God hath brought upon me great mourning. 
For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. Right? So we know when we were setting up our forefathers and setting up the groves and images and worshiping other gods in the land, it wasn't actually the land. The land is, is um, our mother. You understand? The land couldn't do it. It's a land. It was us. When the Lord said, you know, um, about, about Jerusalem, you know, worshiping other gods and, you know, dealing treacherously with him and, and uh, commend adultery against him. He was meaning with her other lovers. He's talking about the idols that we set up. You understand? For those that understand. Um, God had brought up upon me great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many. Who for the sins of my children am left desolate because they departed from the law of God. You see that? So they departed from the law of God. Verse 13. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor tried him in the paths of discipline and his righteousness. Right? Because. Remember. Where the test day to live. Uh, the testament is of no effect. When Moses died, like I said, when Moses died, the testament became in full in force. Okay, he warned us. The Lord told Moses to tell us if we broke his law and not keep his commandments, statutes, and judgments, the curses would come upon us. Okay? So therefore, you know, that's why we in the mess we in. So therefore, if, you know, if we broke the law of Moses and everything, why do they still desire to be under the law of Moses, Israel? Ask yourself this. All right. That veil is still over our people, but it's only taken away through Jesus, man. He is our righteousness for the law, Israel. You got to understand this. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. And we want 59 through 62. Wait, let me make sure. Sixteen, fifty-nine 15, 59 to 62. And it reads, For thus saith the Lord God, I will even deal with thee as thou hast done, which, which has despised the oath in breaking the covenant. So the Lord said it here. Here we go again. We broke the covenant, Israel. We broke the, we, we, we didn't keep the commandments. We broke the law and we broke the covenant, Israel. Deal with thee as thou hast done, which has despised the oath and breaking the covenant. Verse 60. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth. And I will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. Then shalt thou remember thy ways and be ashamed when thou shalt receive thy sisters, thine elder, and thy younger, and I will give them unto thee for daughters, but not by thy covenant. Verse 62. And I will establish my covenant with thee, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Okay? So he said, I will establish thee an everlasting covenant. Right? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13 and 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Remember, he said, I'm, I'm making an everlasting covenant. We just read. Jesus is the everlasting covenant, Israel. He's the covenant. You see that? His blood was shed. You see what I'm saying? Moses is the mediator between God and the old covenant. Christ is the mediator between God and the and the um the Israelites and the new covenant. 
We got to understand this as well. All right. So if we in the new covenant, why do they decide to still be in the, the old covenant? Because that veil that Moses, where he was on Mount Zion with the Lord, that veil is still over them. They can't see it, Israel. You have to be born again. You have to be cleansed in the word of God. You have to be washed. Your conscience has to be washed. Or we ain't going back to the land, Israel. Or um, we ain't going to be saved like that. Because if we still dwelling in the flesh, it's over. We got to walk in the fruit of the spirit. We got to be born again. We got to allow Christ to dwell in us. Let's go to Isaiah 24. Our people need to understand this as well. If we don't be cleansed, you, like I said before, if we don't be cleansed, we could know we Hebrews all we want Israel. That's not going to matter. The point is our forefathers broke the everlasting covenant and the Lord is giving us that time to get right again. He has given us that time to be renewed. Okay? To, to, to be cleansed so he could bring us back to the land. He can't bring us back to the land filthy. He can't bring us back to the land uh, uh, in wickedness again. What would be the point of him chasing out our forefathers out of the land? He got to bring us back and remarry us. He had to cleanse us first before he betrothed us again. Okay? He had to, he had to cleanse us. All right? And give us that heart to deceive and, and put the law in our inward parts. It has to be in our heart to do it, Israel. It has to be in the spirit. We have to um, keep the law in our, with the, the spirit of the law of Christ in our mind. You see what I'm saying? So we got to understand that we ain't going back until we clean. We got to be cleansed. You understand? The Lord is fighting for his name's sake. We got to understand that. He's fighting for his name's sake because we're polluting it among the heathen. All right. That's why he said, I do this not for your sake, O house of Israel, but because you pollute my name among the heathen. So he's going, that's why he said, I will rule, I'm going to rule over you with anger and fury. All right. Because the Lord got to cleanse us, man. He got to cleanse us and to remarry us from all our pollution and our filthy idols and our detestable things, man. All that got to be purged out. We got to be a new creature again, Israel. Let's go to Isaiah 24, verse 4 through 6. And it reads, The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Right? Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burnt, and few men left. Right? So notice that we have broken the everlasting covenant, but we know we see that Jesus is the new covenant, Israel, the everlasting covenant. Alright? So he said the earth mourneth, right? Because, call me over to Proverbs. Chapter 29 and 2, because when the righteous is in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn Israel. Isaiah, uh, Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, who is the righteous? The Israelites. We were the righteous. We supposed to be the righteous Israel. The righteous are in authority. The, pop, the people rejoice, right? They rejoice when things is in order and established and we, you know, we are the gods, we are the judges of the earth and we rule and over. That's how we supposed to have been. The Lord uh, want us to be a holy people. Okay. But things is out of order because the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. But when the wicked bear a rule, the people mourn. So the Lord said when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear a rule, the people mourn. That's why the world is all messed up today and mourning and chaos and death and sin and wickedness because the righteous is not in authority. That's why the Lord is setting up his righteous remnant now.
hey, excuse that. I think somebody's out there with the car or whatever. All right, let's go to Job chapter 9. And we want verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So we see that when the Lord said that um, when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof, not where and who is he, right? So the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, Israel. Let's go over to Hosea chapter 8, verse 1. Hosea chapter 8 and verse 1 set the trumpet to thy mouth he shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law Verse 2, Israel shall cry unto me, my God, we know thee. Verse 3, Israel have cast off the thing that is good, the enemy shall pursue him. So he said, it, he said, the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. So the Lord is saying this everywhere, Israel. It's proof everywhere. But why do our people not take heed to this? Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 29. Deuteronomy 29 and verse 25 is read. Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he hath made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. You see that? So even Daniel and them also knew too. That's why he said, all Israel transgressed my, the law by departing from thy word. And the curse is poured upon us, which is written in the law of Moses. Okay? The reason why the curse was poured upon us is because we broke the law. <laughs> the covenant, Israel. Alright, let's go to Psalms 78. Psalms... Seventy-eight Israel, and we want thirty-seven. For their heart was not right with him; neither were they steadfast in his covenant. You see that? So we broke the covenant, man. Why do you think he had? He said, "I'm gonna make a new covenant." Let's go over to Ezekiel forty-four and verse seven. Ezekiel 44 and verse 7. And that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. You see that? Remember the statutes and judgments, all of that is under the commandments because the Lord told us not to vex the stranger. That's part of the, the, the law, the commandments, the judgments, the statutes. You see, it's a lot that we did. You understand this, right? Okay. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 31. You know, a lot of people don't want to talk about that. You know, vexing the stranger. You know, we vex the stranger still today. A lot of us still vex the stranger today. Oh, the strangers can't be saved. Oh, the, the, the strangers, uh, uh, they can't cleave to the Most High God and His covenant. They can't cleave to Israel. They done. I hear these teachings all over the place. But the Lord said, neither let the son of the stranger 
who have joined themselves to the Lord speak utterly, uh, utterly speak, saying, the Lord has separated me from his people. He said, don't let the stranger say that. Because best believe Israel, the Lord poured out his spirit on some of the servant handmaids who are the Gentiles that's going to get it. And they're going to um, follow the Lord, Israel. All right. So all y'all that's saying, or you Hebrews saying that Gentiles is all done and none of them will make it, you're going to be shocked. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 20. But like I said, we understand that salvation is for Israel. Jesus died for Israel. But if the stranger want to come and cleave to Israel and learn the truth, they can. We can't deny them Israel. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 20. And uh, <laughs> you, you forget that the, Lord, the Most High gave us the covenant. That's the truth. But don't forget there were strangers in the land, Israel. And then they had to keep the law also. You understand? The, the law had to be for one, for the stranger and the Israelite in the land. Okay? Those strangers that came out of the other countries and forsook their gods and learned, wanted to learn the God of Israel. And, uh, you know, cleave to, to the Most High and His people in truth and righteousness. They was allowed to come into the land at that time. And they can choose whatever they can choose what lot they want to stay in. If they want to stay with Judah or anybody, they can they can choose that. And the Lord fed them in the land. You understand? All right. So I get more into that about the video I did about the strangers. If you haven't seen that, all right. I go into detail about that. But don't forget, the strangers was always amongst us, Israel. All right. And that's the reason why the Lord chased up. That's part of the reason why the Lord chased us up out of the land because we wasn't. Our forefather wasn't dealing righteously and judging the stranger righteously and dealing right with the with the stranger, which he don't like that. All right. Um, it's all in the law, Israel. So I said Deuteronomy chapter thirty-one and verse twenty. Wait, let me see. Okay. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers. That flow off with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves in wax and fat. Then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. The Lord already knew we was going to do that. He already knew he was going to break his covenant. He already knew why? Because he, that's why he said, "Ah, a sinful nation laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers." I knew that that was a transgressor from the womb. He called us Israel. He knew he was hard headed and rebellious. Let's jump over to verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. So he said, listen, you're going to go sleep with your fathers. And this people going to go a whoring with the gods of the people of the land. I, he already knew it. Because when Moses died, that the testament, the covenant came of a force now. Whether they go be to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. This is in the book of Deuteronomy. So he already knew we was going to break the law. And Hebrews today is still talking about they keep the law of Moses. Right? That they keep the law of Moses. So basically they're saying they're not in sin. Which the Bible says if any man say he's not in sin, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. That's why we all fall short of the glory of God. That is Judah, the southern kingdom, and Ephraim, the ten tribes, the northern kingdom fall short. It was the point for we to both to be saved through Christ and to be made righteous through him. You understand? By being born again and walking in the fruit of the spirit, Israel. The law and the inward man. That's what it's about. The law have to be written on our hearts. Not written on the stones, Israel. That was all the shadow of things to come. We have to get that. We are spiritual people. We have to understand this. Okay? The things that we've seen on this earth, the, the, the tabernacle and everything was a pattern of things like in heaven. But it wasn't the true image of the things. You understand? Alright? If those things were Moses and the, the physical tabernacle and stuff was glory, rather the things of the spirit is rather glorious more. You understand?
right? So the Lord said, and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Let's go to Isaiah chapter one. We, we got to understand this Israel. If we don't have Jesus, man, we don't have nothing. You need to believe in Jesus because without him, he's your atonement. He's your, uh, he's your sacrifice for, for, um, for your sins, Israel. Through him, he have he made intercession on our behalf. We have access through the Spirit, through Christ, back to the Father. We have He have made us to have peace with our God because the Father wrath is on us. We gotta be covered in the blood of Jesus. If not, the wrath of the Father abideth upon you. When you deny Jesus, you don't have that covering, Israel. Isaiah chapter 1. You know, it don't matter how much we know and all of this, if we still walking in the flesh, that's not going to help us. We have to apply the word. We woke up, we Hebrews, you know. Is you know what I'm saying? This is who we are, you know what I'm saying? Waking up as a Hebrew. It's not just knowing, all right, you're a Hebrew and that's it. It's more to it. It's not just the color, all right, because of our skin, how we look. We always look like that. We just live in a time where the world don't forgot who the, how the Hebrews look. So the appearance of things is a big thing to the world today. Like, you know, oh, you know, we are the Hebrews, you know, the so-called Negroes, and they were black. And we say that, right? They were so-called black because the world forgot us. It's not only just about being black. You're a Hebrew. It's about who you are inside Israel. We are holy people. We have customs and heritages. We, we It's just not the outside appearance. This is what the Lord is telling us. All right. It's how we carry ourselves, how we walk. That's what makes us a Hebrew. All right. That's what makes us a Hebrew. We walk in righteousness and truth in the Lord. You can look like a so-called Negro all you want. But if that's all you believe and oh, that's all it ends there is that, oh, you know, the Negroes is the Hebrews and that's it. And you think you're on a good hand. That's not going to cut it. Now we got to apply the inward man. We got to walk the walk of a Hebrew Israel and righteousness and holiness and truth and love. That's what we got to do. That's what it's about. Not the outside appearance. Don't let the outside appearance puff you up. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Lord said the spirit bear witness with his spirit. We are the sons of God. We just, this is how we look. This is the flesh. But we are spiritual people, Israel. Okay? So we got to walk the walk as a Hebrew. That's what makes us a Hebrew. It's our actions, how we walk and customs, how we talk. How we love one another. You see what I'm saying? We got to bring forth this word out of us, Israel. That's the point of being conformed into the image of Christ. Because he was perfect, he was righteous, he was holiness. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, but he had, he showed he was an Israelite. You see what I'm saying? Not just only all, you know, because he was a so-called black. No, Israel, he walked and lived the life as a Hebrew. And that's how we supposed to want. He want us to be like that. He want us, uh, what that light, because he is that light. He's the father of light, so he want that light to shine out of us, right? That's why he calls us the salt of the earth, that light on the hill, that shine, because, you know, it's the truth. We, we have to show that light to the world. We can't be like the world. We can't do the same access to this riot and go on to do, doing the same thing as them. We have to uh, be separate. You understand? We have to be um, the children of, of our father in heaven, Israel. You see? So it's more to just thinking, oh, all right, I'm a so-called Negro, I'm a Hebrew, and that's it. That means I got a free ticket into heaven. Nope. Because a lot of our people ain't going to make it. You see what I'm saying? That's why we hope by our faith we are saved. If we walk not in the flesh, but in the spirit is real. We got to walk in that spirit. We got to be born again in his word. His word has the cleanses. The water. Remember Christ said to Nicodemus, Except a man be born again of the spirit and water, or the, or the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That's the word. The word have to cleanse you. 
It has to bring out that new man in you. You have to put off the old man. You see what I'm saying? And it's, it's more to just the lust. Okay? It's the envy, the strife, the wrath, the hatred, the murders. You see what I'm saying? The evil speaking, the God, we have to get all that out. That's of the flesh. The Bible says the children of the flesh are not the sons of God. You see what I'm saying? So no matter how you look, this is how we look. You understand? This is just us. We, we look like this. This is what the original Hebrews look like. But it's more than just the flesh. It's the spirit is real. All right. Remember Christ always told the apostle, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. All right. We have to live in the spirit is real. All right, let's get back though. I think I finished. Okay, yeah. Let's go over to Isaiah. I said Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3 through 7. And the Lord said, The ox knoweth his owner. And the master and the ass his master's crib. So the Lord said, the ox even knows his owner, and the ass, the horse or the ass, his master's crib. They know where to go. At the end of the day, they know where to go. They know where to go. Right? But Israel does not know. We don't know where to go. Because we forsaking the, the fountain of living water. Our God, Israel. But Israel does not know. My people do not consider. We don't even consider, he says. We don't even want to try to change. We don't even want to. We don't even want to stop walking and sin. We don't even want to try. We don't even want to walk in righteousness, a lot of us today. Just like our forefathers back then. We are rebellious and stiff-necked people. He knows his people. A lot of us don't want to try. You know? We, we are here trying to keep the law with a carnal mind, which will never happen. It's, it's, the carnal mind is enmity against God. That's just how it is. You understand? The Father is a spirit. Remember Jesus said the Father is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, Israel. My people do not consider. Verse 4, ah, sin, sinful nation. He said we are a sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, sin, a seed of evildoers, children that children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. This is what it's all about is the sin, Israel. Our sin is what separated in us from our God. Our iniquities is what it's all about. This is why he scattered us. This is why, because our forefathers was carnal. You see what I'm saying? It's due to our sin. He, the most I can't be with sin. That's why he told us we are holy to be like him. Don't be like the heathen. They go off of the flesh and stuff. We ought to be separate, he said. We ought to be like him, Israel. Verse 5, why should you be stricken, the Lord said, anymore? You will revolt more and more. He said, you will revolt more and more, Israel. The whole head is sick. He said, the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, the Lord said it, from the sole of the foot. Even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying sores. They have not been closed, neither Bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Right? Because why we broke the law, the Lord wounded us with the wound of an enemy, Israel. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable, 
and thy womb is grievous. He said, the womb is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded you. What did the Lord say, Israel? Listen carefully. For I have wounded you, thee, with the wound of an enemy. You know, like on a battlefield, when an enemy is wounded badly. Right? This is how the Lord did us spiritually. He wounded us with that wound, Israel. The wound of an enemy with the chastisement of a cruel one. He said, with a cruel one. Why? For the multitude of thine iniquity. The Lord said, for our sin. Because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? The Lord said, why are we crying for this affliction, Israel? Right? He's asking us, why are we crying in our affliction? Right? Why are we? He said, What he said? Why cries thou for thine affliction? Why thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity because thy sins were increased? I have done these things to thee. Right? He said, thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 17 to 20. Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them, let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken. With a great breach. He said we are broken with a great breach. With a very grievous blow. Remember he said I've wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. Right? If I go forth into the field. Then behold the slain with the sword. If I go forth into the field. Then behold the slain with the sword. And if I enter into the city. Then behold them that are sick. With famine. Yet both the prophet and the priest go about into a land. That they, don't, that they know not. Right, that they know not. Has thou utterly rejected Judah? Have thy soul loathed Zion? Why has thou smitten us and there is no healing for us? We look for peace and there is no good, and for the time of healing and behold trouble. Right, we look for that healing and the trouble still come upon us. Right, the wrath of the Lord. Verse twenty. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Verse 21, do not abhor us, do not hate us for thine sake, for thy, for thy name's sake. Right? Remember I told you earlier, the Lord is fighting for his name's sake, Israel. He's not doing it for us, he's doing it for his name, right? Because we are his heritage. You understand? For thy name's sake, do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break, remember, break not thy covenant with us. Um, let's head over to Lamentations. Let's head over to Lamentations. Chapter 2, verse 11 to 13, Israel. Lamentations. Two verse 11 to 18. The Lord said, my eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Because the children and the suckling swoon in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? When they swoon as the wounded in the streets, the wounded in the streets of the city. When their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee? He said, what shall I equal to thee? 
that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion, for thy breach. Here we go again. Remember what he said, Jeremiah 14. Thy breach is great like the sea. That means why? That wound he hit us. I mean, he said a cruel one, Israel. Who can heal thee? Right? He said, who can heal thee? Let's go back. Let's go to Ezekiel 22. And we're going to start at verse 14. This is why the Lord said this here, Israel. Can thy heart endure? Or can thy hands be strong in the days that I should deal with thee? I, the Lord, have spoken it and will do it. The Lord said, can our hearts endure? Or can thy hands be strong in the days that I should deal with thee? Because this, what the Lord gave us, is something that blows our mind. That's why we are here in our captivity still and don't know what's going on. And it seems like it's taking long, right, for the Lord to come back. Right? Because this time he's given us, we're supposed to be getting ourselves right to go back to our God, Israel. We're supposed to be walking in righteousness and truth and holiness in Christ. Putting off that old man with um, being done away with sin, Israel. Because remember when Jesus died, he, he, it took him one sacrifice for sins forever. But you got to believe in him. You got to walk in his ways. This is what we got to do. We got to walk in his ways. If we don't, we ain't going to make it. You understand? So that's what the Lord said. Can thy heart endure? Can thy hands be strong in the days that I should deal with you? I, the Lord, have spoken it. Right? And I will scatter thee among the heathen and disperse thee in the countries and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. You see that? Because we was, we was caught up in all that filthiness, abomination, detestable things, and doing all type of wickedness in the land, which he told us not to do. So, therefore... We played the harlot, right? We committed the adultery, serving other gods. Wisdom of Solomon tells us the, the devising of idols is the, is the beginning of spiritual fornication. When you start messing with them idols, Israel, we start doing that. That was the beginning of spiritual fornication. All right, so that's why the Most High gave us a bill of divorce. But when he come back, he's going to be trophous because that remnant he's molding and cleansing in the nations right now is going to be like chaste versions to Christ when he appears. He's going to consume all that filthiness out of us by then because that remnant is going to be cleansing their conscience. They're going to be cleansing themselves and walking in the newness of life. They're going to not be in sin anymore. They're going to be washed through the word, Israel. That's what it's about. Verse 16, and thou, shalt, and thou shalt take thine inheritance and thyself in the sight of the heathen and shall know that I am the Lord. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 30. You see, there's nothing wrong with the law. But the law of Moses, we couldn't keep. We couldn't keep the law of Moses because due to our carnal conscience, Israel. Jeremiah 30, and let's start at 15. Why criest thou for thine affliction? He said, why are we crying? It was our fault to go from the everlasting God. Even our mother, Jerusalem, said that. It was our, our fault to go straight from the everlasting God by sacrificing unto devils and not to God, right? And why criest thou for thy affliction? The Lord said, thy sorrows and caribou for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Right, that's why he said Ezekiel, uh, I think it's uh, 23, no, Ezekiel 37, 23, 38, 23. And the, he said when he come back, in the end, the heathen shall know. He said the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for transgressing my law. Therefore, I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. But he said I would, uh, he will return to us and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. That's including the northern kingdom too, whom he cast off for so long. Because they reconciled back into the fold through Jesus, Israel. Let's jump over to verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. 
right? Save the Lord because they call thee an outcast, because they call us an outcast, right? Saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. You see, that's where they messed up at, Israel. He that touch of you touches the apple of the Most High's eyes. That the nations have dealt very wrong with us. And they have to pay when the Lord come back. He did this to us. They have to pay for their, their sins too, the nations. Let's go to Isaiah 30 and verse 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. And the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people. Remember that breach he kept saying, right? The breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. We've been hit so hard. We didn't even know Israel. He knocked it out of us. Our remembrance, our heritage, everything. That's what he said. You're going to be able to, your heart is going to do what I'm get, what I'm going to do with you. This is, it's going to feel like hell. This is our hell, Israel. This is like hell to us. Right? We don't, this is, it seems like a bad dream, right? Like a never ending. Because the Lord wasn't playing with us, Israel. That's why he said to Ezra, second Ezra chapter, Six, verse 19, and he said, Ezra, and I will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the affliction, remember, when he said, why cries thou for thine affliction, right? And when thine afflict, and when, so I can, where they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness, and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled because the Lord got it out in balance. No man knows the time, day, or the hour. Out of Hebrews, talking about the 400 years. That's not what it is, Israel. Don't go off of that. Right? Christ said, No man knows the time, day, or the hour. All right? Um, with the unrighteousness, and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. We are being afflicted, Israel. We still being afflicted. We're in captivity still. We're still being afflicted. He said until the affliction of Zion is fulfilled. Jerusalem is, is still uh, trodden down by the Gentiles. Until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Right? So that wound, Israel. That wound, right? But we can only be cured by the word. Let's go to Second Ezra's. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 69 and being judged if he should not forgive them that are cured with his word and put out the multitude of contentions so he said them that are cured with his word you understand that's the only way we can be cured Israel that's the only way we can be cured we cannot be cured Nowhere else but by the word of God, Israel. Let's head over to Exodus 15. It's only the Lord can heal us, Israel. He did this. He can only kill, uh, heal us, all right? Um, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his eyes, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. You see that? That's what we want. I, for I am the Lord that healeth you, he's saying to Israel. He did this. He wounded us with the wound. We, those that are cured by his word, you understand? Hearkening unto him. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Rebelliousness is as the sin of witchcraft. 
right? So we, we are cleansed and cured and healed by the word of God because the word was made flesh and walked and talked and, and dwelt among us and died for our sins, Israel. All right, let's go over to, so we broke the everlasting covenant. We broke the covenant and Now the law has to be in our inward parts. All right. It has to be in us, in our hearts. It has to be inside the inward man through this in the spirit Israel. We have to serve the law of God in our mind, Israel, through the spirit of the spirit of, of the law of Christ. Let's go to Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. And we went four and eight. He said, because I knew that thou art obstinate and thy neck is an, is an iron sinew and thy brow brass. Let's jump down to eight. Yeah, thou heardest not. Yeah, thou knowest not. Yeah, from that time that thine ear was not open. For I knew that thou wouldest dealt very treacherously, treacherously, treacherously. And was called a transgressor from the womb. A lot of people don't understand the Most High hated us, man, at one point. He hated his own inheritance. Okay, which is us. That's why he's fighting for his name. We're profaning it among the heathen. We were supposed to be righteous. And walk in his ways. He's a holy and just God, Israel. And a righteous God. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord is mad. The Lord is mad. Right? So the Lord, the Lord is mad. We supposed to have been holy. Right? He would have gave us the things we wanted. You see what I'm saying? The desires of our heart. We would have been on top and not at the bottom, Israel. Right? So he said we was a transgressor from the womb, he says. Remember, he called us a seed of evildoers also. Let's go over to Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30. Praise the Lord, man, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High, man. You know, for waking us up. We're going to some of us up to get it, Israel. You know, now we woke up, we have to apply the word to our life. We have to change. You understand? We have to eat the flesh of the son of man. We have to. Because there's eternal life in there. We have to change. That's the only way we're making it, Israel. Not walking in the flesh, but in the spirit. Praise the Lord, glory to his name. Hmm. All right, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 30. And it reads, who has gone, let me show you, oh, slide, 2 verse 30, I said, right? For I knew that they would not hear me. The Lord said, I knew they wouldn't hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. So the Lord said, we're going to remember ourselves, Israel. He said, we're going to remember ourselves in the land of our captivities. Right? Let's go to Second Ezra. Let's see. Let's go to Second Ezra chapter one. Let's read that. 
the second book of the prophet Ezra, the son of Sarias, the son of Azarias, the son of Helkias, the son of Sadamias, the son of Sadak, the son of Akatob, the son of Achaias, the son of Phanes, the son of Heli, the son of Amarias, the son of Hil, uh, the son of Isaiah, the son of Merimoth, the son of Anna, the son of Osias, the son of Beroth, the son of Abase, the son of Phanes, the son of Eliezer, Eliezer the priest. So remember what we remember the lesson I was talking about about Salatiel and Zerubbabel and Josiah begot Salatiel, um, Jehoiachin and such like that. Remember, it goes by the fathers, um, going by the beginning. You see what I'm saying? All that line. So I said he's the son of Sarai, the son of Azarias, all right, the son of Helkias. It's that line he come out of. You understand? Got to understand that as well. Verse three, the son of Aaron, right? The son of Aaron, because. Ezra's come from that line. He's from the tribe of Levi. So he comes from the Levitic line, Israel. So I says he's the son of the son of son of Eliezer. And it goes all the way back to Aaron. The son of Aaron of the tribe of Levi, which was in kept, which was captive in the land of Medes in the reign of, of Xerxes, king of Persians, of the Persians. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Go thy way and show my people their sinful deeds. And their children, their wickedness, which they have done against me, that they may tell their children's children, right? <laughs> and we, our forefathers are their children's children, you understand? And we are reading about what our forefathers went through in the land and what they did and how they transgressed against the Lord our God. Right? That they may tell their children's children. Because of the sins of their fathers are increased in them, for they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange gods. That was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Therefore, uh, the Most High looked as, as Israel as a woman. Okay, he was married to us. We committed adultery against the Lord. Am not I even he that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage? But they have provoked me into wrath and despised my counsels. Right? That's why the Most High is mad. He is so mad. That's why he said my thoughts for you is good and not evil. But it's his nature to um, punish the wicked and sinners. Because he's righteous, holy, and just. So just because we're Israelites and we walk in sin, he has to punish us. He might chastise us and you know, um, he, he'll walk contrary to us if we walk contrary to him and he'll keep chastising us. But after a while, he got to send that sword after us. You see what I'm saying? After a while, he got to send that sword. All right. So we got to understand that. So, yeah, so the, that's why the Most High was mad, man. The Most High is mad after that last time when he came, put on the flesh. And uh, he ascended back up to, in the heaven. That was the last time we heard from the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I just want to say I want Israel. I want you to watch out for false prophets in these last days. Because Israel, you know what I'm saying? Israel is heavy. Satan out here. Satan out here is he. he he's trying to go full in Israel. All right. He's trying to go full in. And we got to understand how real it is. This is a spiritual warfare. So be careful. Always test the spirits, Israel, whether they of God. But Satan is masquerading as an angel of light. But you got to ask the Father for discernment. And so you can point this out. Because it's real in these last days, man. Just be careful, Israel. Test the spirits. You know them by their fruits. All right? So the father is mad and he went back to heaven and hid his face from us. Gave us into the hand of our enemies. He was He's mad, Israel. And he's coming back with the wrath because not only he punished us, he told Jeremiah to take the cup and make all the nations to drink because they're going to be punished for their sins too. That's what he said. He began to bring um, 
evil upon this people which is called by his name, and will, will they be utterly unpunished? No, nah, no, nah, the nations got to pay for their wickedness too. You see what I'm saying? He's a fair and just God, Israel. You're not just going to punish Israel for their sins and do all this and destroy them and make them a waste and all of this and to correct them and chastise them just to let the nations go freely. Nah, the Bible says in 2 Maccabees, I think it is, he can't wait to punish the heathen, the Most High. He can't wait till they come to the fullness of their sins. He can't wait. That's why he said in the latter days, you shall consider it perfect. The thoughts of his heart, he's going to perform all the thoughts of his heart in these last days. All right, so um, yeah, he's mad, and you know, he's the lamb is coming back with the wrath, also. All right, so we left off at um, and he said, Let me see. All right, verse seven, but they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsels. Pull thou off then the hair of thy head and cast all evil upon them, for they have not been obedient unto my law. But it is a rebellious house, a rebellious people. How long shall I forbear them unto whom I done so much good? Many kings have I destroyed for their sakes. Pharaoh with his service and all his power have I smitten down. All the nations have I destroyed before them. And in the east I have scattered the people of two provinces, even of Tyrus and Zidon. Right, that's why in Joel chapter 3 he got um, wrath coming for Tyre and Zidon. Man, they sold the Israelites, okay, for wine and for a harlot, man. You know, and, he, and the wrath is on all the nations, the heathen, to come on up. Let the heathen be waking up and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Let the heathen be wake and bring up their mighty men. Right? Let the weak say I'm strong. Lord calling them out. He said, let them weak. They're weak. Let them let them that say they're strong, but they're really, really weak. Come up. Because he's going to show them true power. Come all ye heathen, he says. Round about call thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Cause thy mighty ones to come down. Because it's going to be real. Alright. So he said. Even of Tyrus and of Zidon. Tyrus and Zidon. Zidon. And have slain all their enemies. Speak thou therefore unto them. Saying thus saith the Lord. I led you through the sea. And in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. I gave you Moses for a leader. And Aaron for a priest. I gave you light and a pillar of fire and great wonders have I done among you. Yet have you forgotten me, saith the Lord. So the Lord said, all this he's done, but we've forgotten him because we forgot the law of Moses. We departed from the law due to our carnal mind, Israel. Thus saith the almighty Lord, the quails was a, were a token, token for you. I gave... You tent for your saved God, nevertheless ye murmured there, and triumph not in my name, because our Father, our God, okay, he loves worship and praise, Israel. He created all things. We ought to worship him. All things was made for his glory. You understand? Everything you see, whether it's principalities, with uh are evil. You know what I'm saying? He, he formed the light. He created the darkness. He made peace. He created evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. The Lord controls everything. He made everything for his glory, Israel. Everything. Okay? So he loved to be praised and worshipped and glorified. All right? And triumph not in my name for the destruction of your enemies. But ever to this day do ye, do ye yet mourn. Where are the benefits? The Lord said, where is the benefits that I have done for you? When you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, did ye not cry unto me? Saying, why hast thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? Our forefather said that. Even though they just seen the miracle of the Lord parting the Red Sea. The Lord parted the Red Sea. Had the chariots with the angels 
guiding us through the Red Sea with, and, and made it dark where the Egyptians couldn't get to us. And we said, why did he bring us up into the wilderness to kill us? They have no faith. After what they witnessed, we didn't see this, but we have faith, Israel, in these times. They seen the glory of the Lord and stuff. They seen Moses and stuff. You understand? That's why Christ said to Thomas, Bless is he, you see me, that's why you believe. But bless is he that have not seen me and yet believe. Whom we have not seen, we love. Saying, verse 18, saying, Why hast thou brought us up into this wilderness to kill us? Man, our people were wicked. Our people was wicked. And rebellious, how can you say that to the Most High after what he did? It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness. And that's why we still in captivity, man. Destroyed. Right? It's the way our people was thinking. Instead of thinking spiritually and, and holy, we was thinking carnally and stuff and like the world. Then had I pity upon your mornings, the Lord said, and gave you manna to eat. So ye did eat angels' bread. When ye were thirsty, did I not cleave the rock and waters flowed out to your fill? For the heat, I covered you with the leaves. But we know the Lord Moses, um, the God didn't get the glory. That's why he was mad. You know what I'm saying? I divided among you. I divided among you a fruitful land. I cast out the Canaanites, the Parasites, and the Philistines before you. What shall I yet do more for you, saith the Lord? Thus saith the Lord, Almighty Lord, when you were in the wilderness in the river of, of the Amorites, being a thirst and blaspheme in my name, I gave you not fire for your blasphemes. The Lord said we was in, in the land of the Amorites blaspheme in his name. And he said he didn't give it because he he's merciful. He said he didn't even give us fire for our blasphemes, Israel. We got to understand the, our God and our power, Israel. We got to we got to come back. You understand? He's not. He's no joke. He's no game. You know, he's not that Christian God, Israel. Right? Our forefathers called him the great and terrible God. You understand? Thou art terrible out that holy place. Because the Most High don't play around with when it comes to sin and wickedness. He don't play. Alright? Now our God is love, yes. He's all of that and much more in beauty, Israel. We know that. But nobody want to talk about the other side, the wrath of the Lord. When we do wickedness and evil. Alright? That's why they don't say it in the churches. It'll run the people out of there if they start reading from the Old Testament. Thus saith the Lord Almighty, when you were in the wilderness, in the river of the Amorites, being a thirst and blaspheme in my name, I gave you not fire for your blasphemes, but cast a tree in the water and made the river sweet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What shall I do unto thee, O Jacob, thou Judah? Okay. Remember, he's talking to Judah. Thou Judah. What is not obey me, I will turn me the other nations, and unto those will I give my name, that they may keep my statutes. Seeing ye have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. When ye desire to, when ye desire me to be gracious unto you, I shall have no mercy upon you. And we said, Why cries thou for thy affliction? Thy iniquities have separate. Have, uh, he have done this to our, um, for our iniquities because of our iniquities. Be gracious unto you, I shall not have no mercy upon you. Whensoever ye shall call upon me, I will not hear you, for ye, are the, for ye have defiled your hands with blood, and your feet are swift to commit manslaughter. A lot of our people still do that today. Ain't nothing new. We did it in the land. Man, we doing it. Ain't nothing new today about it. All right? We out here doing that to our people all the time, man. Because why we destroy it for lack of knowledge? We are going into captivity for lack of knowledge, right? And he said, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorn is scorn, and the fool hate knowledge, the Lord said. 
So the fool hate knowledge. Verse 27. Ye have not as it were forsaken me, but your own selves, save the Lord. Thus saith the Almighty Lord, have I not prayed you as a father his sons? Right? The Lord dealeth with Israel like father do his sons. He is our father. He is our father, Israel. No one else. As a father his sons, as a mother her daughters, and a nurse her young babes, that ye will be my people, and I shall be your God, not the world. That I shall be your God, that ye shall be my children. You see that? The only way to be the sons and daughters of God, you have to be an Israelite. And I should be your father. I gather you together as a hen. Gather her chickens under her wings. Praise the Lord. But now what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. Right? When ye offer unto me. I will turn my face from you. For your solemn feast days. Your new moons and your circumcisions. Have I forsaken. Right? I sent unto you my servants, the prophets, whom ye have taken and slain, right? Because we are rebellious people and torn their bodies to pieces who blood I will require to your hand, save the Lord. Thus saith the Lord Almighty, your house is desolate. It sure is because we are in the land of our captivity and in Jerusalem being trodden down by the Gentiles. I will cast you out as the wind of stubble, the Lord says. And your children shall not be fruitful, for they have despised my commandment and have done the thing that is evil before me. You see that? So now, Lord said, I hate your feast days, your new moons and your circumcisions I have I forsaken, right? Why do our people still want to be under the veil of Moses? Okay, the veil of Moses, Why? Um, I think that's it in here. Let's get back. Let's go to Second Kings, chapter seventeen. Let me see where I'm at. I might have to cut it off. Okay, I'm good. Second Kings, chapter seventeen. Second Kings, chapter seventeen, verse thirteen to seventeen. And it reads, yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law, which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Notwithstanding, that they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers, that they did not believe in the Lord their God. Right. Verse 15. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant. Right. So they rejected his statutes and his covenant. Here we go again. That he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity. He said we follow vanity, Israel. Right. And became vain and went after the heathen, which he told us, learn not the ways of the heathen. That they were round about them, that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. Verse 16, and they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves and made a grove and worship all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Right. That's why you say your fathers have mistaken my name for Baal. We're not we're not going to call him Baal no more. When he come back, we're going to call him Ishai. Which means my husband. Right? We've mistaken his name for God. That's why we call him Lord now. Right? But when he come back, he's going to restore our, our Hebrew tongue, our ancient Hebrew tongue, that we may call upon him. Right? So he said, we have worshipped all the hosts of heaven, which we were not supposed to do because God was our God. All right, he gave the host of heaven to the heathen. That was for them, not for us. But we learned their ways, right? 
So he said we worship all the whole stuff heaven, right? And worship all the hosts of heaven and serve Baal. So he said we worship all the hosts of heaven and serve Baal. Right? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. These are all breaking the commandments. The law of Moses is real. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Let's start at verse 14. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach the statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whether ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Orab out of the midst of the fire. That's right. Only Moses seen the back side, the back part of the Most High. But we didn't, our forefathers didn't see the Most High. Okay? The Lord spake unto you in Orab out of the midst of the fire. Right? That was Jesus talking to us. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Where's the heathen? They do this. Idols. That's why he's going to punish them. Right? The idols was never from the beginning, he said. They're going to be taken away when he come. And the persons that made it. It's the beginning of spiritual fornication, the devising of idols. He gave the heathen the, the sun and the moon and the stars. We're going to get there. The likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. See, if we knew this, we would have knew that the white Jesus Christ was false because that's an image. You understand? There's no image of Christ. We're not supposed to make images of the Most High. Right? The likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And let's, right? So the heathen, you see this today, the gargoyles in the churches and the, the, the pictures of things and the, the, the idols of, of the old so-called history people on the horses and stuff. You see the statues downtown and all of this. The heathen do this. They do this. We were not supposed to partake in this and do this, Israel. This is what they do. They brought in idols. That's why he's going to punish them also. That's part of their punishment for making idols with the work of their hands. It's vanity. It can't see, smell, taste, hear. It can't do nothing. It rusts. It gets old, Israel. It becomes a stumbling block to the souls of men, Israel. Idols. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground... Right? The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Unless, he's talking to Israel. He said, unless thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven. And when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, it should be driven to worship them. And serve them which the Lord thy God, your God, Israel, have divided unto all the nations under the whole heaven. You see that? The host of heaven. He divided it unto all the nations. Verse 20, but the Lord have taken you, Israel, and brought you forth out of the iron, iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, of inheritance, as ye are this day. I fight for my name, I'm for, not for your sakes I do this, but for my name be polluted among the heathen. We are the inheritance, you understand? So that's what they're supposed to serve the nations. That's what he divided unto them. We he separated the sons of Adam and he he separated the Israelites to himself. We he's our God. We ought to serve him, not the host of heaven and idols, Israel. Alright, which the Lord gave unto all the nations of the host of uh unto all nations under the whole heaven, right? That's why when you look at Egypt. The Egyptians, they what? They worship the suns and stuff, right? <laughs> it shows you. They worship the suns and things like that, right? I guess the moon and all of that stuff. You know, Ra and all of this. I don't really get into that. But the Most High divided that unto the nations. Right? Ham and them is Gentiles too. They all Gentiles. Not just Japheth. Ham is Gentiles too. Israel. All right? 
So I wanted to show you that. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5 and 9. First John chapter five and nine. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name, Israel. First John chapter five, verse nine. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he testified of his son. Right? Let's go over to John chapter 5. Um, John chapter 5. And we went 38 to 40. And Christ said, And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and that they are they which testify of me, and yet and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Right? Because these fa the Pharisees and the size of these Jews still thought they were still under the veil of Moses. He's letting them know, like, if you will come to me, I will give you life. You see what I'm saying? He is the end of the law for righteousness. Not the end of the law, but the end of the law for righteousness. We are saved by God's, we are saved by God's righteousness. The law would have been our righteousness if we kept the commandments of the Lord. All right? So Christ is saying, like, listen, search the scriptures, they testify of me. All right? Let's go over to... Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. This is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth, mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 19 and we want 15 Israel. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin and any sin that he that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Let's go over to John eight and seventeen. Christ said, Is it also is it also written in your law? That the testimony of two men is true. Right? So, Jeremiah, we've been through Jeremiah, Ezekiel. That's two witnesses right there. Um, Nehemiah, the book of Psalms, Kings, Deuteronomy, Hosea, Joshua. Right? We've been through many prophets. Those are the mouths of two or three witnesses, Israel. That we broke the law of Moses. We broke the law of Moses. That's why he had to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. We broke the covenant. I showed you many scriptures. So why do our people still desire to be under the veil of Moses? It can only be taken away through Christ. You have to believe. Those that believe, you have to believe on Jesus. If you don't believe on him, then, you know, the Bible says you condemn. You know what I'm saying? You, you, condemn, you condemn yourself because you don't believe in the truth. You know what I'm saying? The, um, the most high testifier of his son in the Bible. You see what I'm saying? He even says it 
in the Apocrypha. Right? Second Esdras, chapter 6 and verse 28. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. After these years shall my son Christ die, and all men that have life. So even the Most High acknowledge, we believe in the Apocrypha, right? So the Most High acknowledges his son, Jesus, and his name is Jesus here. Right? Second Andrew chapter 13 and verse 52. And he said unto me, like as thou can neither seek out nor the things that are in the deep of the sea, even so, even so can no man upon earth see my son or those that be with him but in the daytime. Let's jump over to verse 37. And this my son shall rebuke. He said, this my son shall rebuke the wicked adventures of the nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. Okay. Show All right, so the most high acknowledges his son. <laughs> That's why he said in 1 John 5 and 9. 1 John 5 and 9. Right? 1 John 5 and 9. If we receive the witnesses of men, the witness of God is greater. So if we get in witness about Christ and everything, the witness of God is greater. We get witnesses in the Old Testament that we broke the law. The witness of God is greater, man. For this is the witness of God, which he have testified of his son. Right? John even said he testified. He was a witness to Christ. The apostles, Peter, even said he's a witness. Right? That Jesus was raised up to give repentance to Israel, forgiveness of sins. And he said even the Holy Ghost is a witness. Right? And give it to them, to only to them that obey God. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 11 and 10. Jeremiah, we broke the covenant. Jeremiah 11 and 10. The Lord said they are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, which, reviewed, which refused to hear my words. And they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Verse 11, therefore thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Right? So he said, the house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 6. And verse 19. Here on earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Right? Remember, he even told Ezra. What did he tell Ezra? Second Ezra chapter 1. Verse 8, pull thou off then the hair of thy head and cast all evil upon them. For they have not been obedient to my law, but is a rebellious people. Say so he going to send cast evil upon us, Israel. That's what the Lord said. Let's go over to Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 31 to 34. No, I think I'm in the wrong one. Jeremiah chapter 31 and we want 31 to 34. That's why he said this. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, 
that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Notice he said house of Israel and house of Judah. Remember, we just read in Jeremiah 11, I believe it was. He said, both the house of Israel and Judah have broken my covenant. So he's going to make a new covenant with both of them again. You see what I'm saying? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. What is what this word here is what I don't understand how people don't get that he made a new covenant. So how are you still trying to be under the covenant of Moses? You see what I'm saying? If we couldn't even, our forefathers couldn't keep the law with the carnal mind, how are you still trying to keep the law with the carnal mind? How? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new, new, new something it means new. It's, it's, it's brand new. Like when you go buy some new sneakers, right? You got some old sneakers in the corner, right? That have been messed up. And you go to the store and buy something new. It's not the same. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 32, listen carefully, Israel, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That's the law of Moses, right? The commandments, the law, the covenant. So he made it specifically clear, Israel, he said, not according to the covenant, meaning not the same covenant which they, they broke. That's why he's making a new covenant. We in this mess, right? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Why well, says which my covenant they break? It's simple, Israel. So he said we broke it, which I showed you many scriptures proving we broke the law. Right? Even then you said. We all transgress. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Hold on. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. So the Lord, the, the covenant, right, is dealing with the law in our inward parts. Okay, not the ones that was written on the stone with Moses, with the with the finger of God, the hand of God. That was glorious. But we talking about the law that is the uh, the law, the covenant that's in us, Israel. It's in our, it's in us. The law is written in us. You see what I'm saying? But this shall be the covenant that I will make the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put, he said, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Right? What are you going to do? He said, put it in their inward parts. That's in the spirit, the inward Israel. You see what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Remember, he wrote it on the stone, the physical. But he said he's going to write it in our hearts. Right? And their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Right? Because he's going to take away that stony heart and give us a heart of flesh. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. Everyone his brother saying, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their, the Israelites, their iniquity. How did it come to the whole world? Forgive their iniquity and I remember their sins no more. Right? And he said, I'll remember their sins no more. Let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 1. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Right? Because both the house of Judah, they're going to be back in the house of Ephraim. The ten tribes are going to be one fold. It's going to be one shepherd, which is Jesus Christ. They're going to be reconciled. They're going to be one. Right? Christ made the, uh, both twain one new man making peace. Right? 
So he said, not according to the same covenant, right? Let's go over to Jeremiah 32. And verse 37, behold, I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath. And I will bring them again into this place and I will cause them to dwell safely and they shall be my people and I will be their God. And I will give them one heart in one way that they may fear me forever. He said he's going to give us one heart this time. He's going to give us one heart that we may fear him forever, Israel. We ain't going to never depart from the law and the inward man ever is round. For the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they may not depart from me. Yeah, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will plant them in this land surely with my whole heart and with my whole soul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Because the Most High. Let me see. Let's go to Jeremiah, Ezekiel 11. And let's start at verse 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far among the heathen. And although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Right? Now you remember, we already know the body of Christ is us. We are the temple of the living God where the most high his spirit is. That's why he says stay away from fornication. Right? In the countries where they shall come. Therefore, say, thus say of the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart. Here we go again. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. He said, You're going to put a new spirit within you, Israel. And I will take the stony heart of their flesh. And I will give them the heart of flesh. Right? We're going to be able to perceive. Remember, he didn't give us the heart to perceive ever since we came out of Egypt. Give them an heart of flesh. That they may walk in my statutes and keep my orders in essence and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. You see that? But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Because when he come back and put us under the bond of the covenant, he's going to purge out the rebels and lead the rebels in there. And they're not going to the land of Israel, he said. But he's going to gather all Israel out of all the nations. That's what he promised. But I mean, all of us is making it there. And he said, they shall know that I am the Lord. The stiff neck and the hard headed ones today that, still, that don't want to wake up. You know, and change themselves and change their life and, and turn from sin. That's our mission. That's our job. What we have to do, Israel. Right? So he said he's going to give us that heart. He's going to put a new spirit within us. Right? So let's go over. Let me see if I can get one more. I'm just talking about this a little bit. Ezekiel 36 and 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. That water is the word. And ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Right? A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. He said that, right? And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people and I will be your God. See that? Israel, that's what it's about. Right? I will sprinkle clean water upon you. It's the word, Israel. Ephesians 5 and 26. That he, meaning Christ, might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water by the word. This is why he said the sprinkle is enough to clean water. He got we gotta cleanse ourselves. He's given us the time because he don't want none of us to perish. Right? The long suffering of the Lord is the salvation. That's why he said, I will put my spirit within you. 
right? In Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, once you believed it, you believed this word and believed in Christ, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. I will put my spirit within you. Why? Because which is verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory when he comes back. That's why the Bible says we shall see him as he is and we shall be changed like him. We shall be changed like him for we shall see him as he is. The inheritance, the earnest of the, our inheritance. Right? When you believe you will sit with that Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 12, that we shall be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. You have to believe in Christ. This is all what the Most High is telling us in the Old Testament, the Psalms and the Prophets. We have to believe on his word. The only way we can be cleansed is through his word, Israel. John chapter 15 and 3, Christ said, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's the only way. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, put a new spirit within you. This gospel, the words is spirit and life. You see what I'm saying? The word is the truth. When you believe in the word and believe in Christ, Jesus Christ, not a lot of us going to believe. So when we believe, the Lord said what? We still with that, right? To the time of the redemption, of the purchased possession. Because we were purchased with Jesus' blood, not with the uh, tradition of men, which is money and gold, Israel. He purchased us with his blood. So we have to cleanse ourselves and be born again in this word. We got to become like little children again. You understand? This is what it's about. So I left off. At Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 1. But my, my time is up and I'm going to end this. But I hope you get edified, Israel. And as we keep going on, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, seek and keep pray, um, praying to the Most High for understanding. And um, just listen to his word. That's all we got to do. We got to be clean. We got to be like chaste virgins, Israel. We can't be caught up in sin. You understand? We want to die in Christ, or if some of us bless here, if we bless here at His coming, we want to be blameless at His coming. All right, we want to don't want to be under the veil of Moses. We want Christ to set you free, Israel. When the Son of Man set free, He is free indeed. He said, "The truth shall make you free." What is the truth? Thy word is true. That's why He said to the Father, "Sanctify, cleanse them through Thy truth. Thy word is truth, because the words is spirit and life, Israel." Don't worry about the pages here and the book, how it got made. It's the words here, which is spirit and life. This is the word. We have to be cleansed by the word. So on that note, I hope you got edified Israel and I'll see you on part three. God Lord's willing. So on that note, I want to give all praise, glory and honor and thanksgiving to the Holy One of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name, the great I am that I am. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Israelites, that sit on the throne of truth, justice, holiness, and righteousness, and love, and mercy, and long-suffering, and patience, Israel. And his word, wisdom, and son, Jesus Christ, who was made flesh to die for the twelve tribes of Israel's sins, and to reconcile them back to their God, and the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. On that note, I say shalom.